and you can tell he was still pissed about what happened earlier during their fight in the bathroom because he hit this man with a double drop kick trying to inflict as much pain as possible. So we start off with Maito on his knees in front of Ghetto glazing him the same way NBA fans be glazing LeBron. But that might be a stretch because this man LeBron got dunked on and everyone acted like that shit ain't happened. And I mean they literally acted like it didn't happen. But make glaze, Yuji pulls up yelling at him to give him back Gojo and he sends out this fish to swallow up Yuji. But in reality he just fell on his ass. Then bro tries doing the same thing again and gets ambushed by these centipedes leaving him in a bloody mess. Ghetto's lucky he ain't tried that on me because I keep a bottle of race spray on me at all times. Ten toes down. You're never catching me without it. Now while Ghetto was distracted, this bum Maito we tried sneaking up on him, but he weaved out the way no problem, and just by the look in Maito's eyes, he There's knew no his time had come, and starts getting turned into an orb by Ghetto so he can absorb him. Bro was so desperate he started grasping at thin air. He thought Casper the Ghost was about to give him a helping hand. Like bro, you're cooked. This is the same dude who was joyfully spreading misery around to everyone in the show, just for him to be crying and whining in his final moments. You are not getting any sympathy from me, buddy. If it were up to me, I would have sentenced this man to being held in an insane asylum while being forced to listen to KSI's music on repeat because after that I promise you he would rather be six feet under than listen to that but after Ghetto got done turning this man into an orbit, he taps into his inner ash cash and swallows a hole. Like homie is a certified throat go, ate that shit with no gag reflex and really said ah! after it. Now we know what he's up to when he's not conspiring to take over the world. But anyways, he looks up into the sky and sees Momo on her broomstick and I don't know why she's sitting there all nonchalant like she's actually tough for something. I don't even know what her ability is. She literally just exists to fly on this broom and remind me of the witch from the Wizard of Oz. And then she signals this frog to shoot a flurry of arrows at Ghetto which didn't do anything at all as he was easily running away from them. Then suddenly gets sniped at by Mai, blocking it with a squid. And Mai was tight as hell. She was trying to put together that Call of Duty mixtape so that she could join FaZe. But that ain't how it worked no more. Cause you gotta spit straight brain rot at a camera 12 hours a day and FaZe Banks will be kicking down your door immediately to get you on that 360 deal. And Ghetto's over here inspecting the bullet talking about some- Just hit your shots, kid. It's quite simple. But lurking in the shadows, we see someone getting ready to unsheath their sword and behead Ghetto. And it was none other than my boy Zoro. Nah, I'm just playing. It was Miwa's trash ass to pull up to the fight. <laughs> She tries attacking Ghetto with this weak ass attack and ends up getting that Aizen treatment, catching her sword and breaking it with one hand. And I don't even know why she looks surprised by what just happened. She literally refers to herself as useless Miwa, so please do us all a favor and never try to cook again. Cause that sh irritated this man Ghetto to the point of immediately pulling out his ultimate. Bro was moving like RDC's how adults be beating kids up in anime, because this was just uncalled for, airing out the entire area with this one move on these level 1 crooks. But luckily for the Kyoto students, Kusakabe saved their trash asses from front row seats to a King Von concert. And speaking of the Kyoto students, why did they pull up acting like they could actually box? Like I swear, the higher ups were tasked with the job to assemble a squad on par with Team USA, but instead we got the Detroit Pistons with Toto being the equivalent to Kate Cunningham. And bro, did Mecha Moro now warn y'all to stay away from Shibuya cause y'all were sorry as hell? Like I clearly remember him saying, I need you to listen carefully Miwa, you and the other Kyoto students gotta turn back cause all of y'all sorry as hell. You. My Norotoshi and Momo trash. Then how come you let Toto go to Shibuya? Because Toto can actually box, unlike y'all. So don't make me repeat myself again, unless y'all trying to join me in the afterlife. But as we can see, they decided to ignore what he said and pulled up anyway. Good game. <laughs> But after the dust settled, my boy Chosa pulled up to the scene looking for stray smoke because he realized the fake ghetto was the same person who gave his mom back shots and left to go get a carton of milk. And Chosa wasn't gonna let that slide. So Kuna's girlfriend pulls up, but he didn't care. Anyone that got in his way was getting turned into a statistic. Shooting the piercing blood right at her, barely blocking it with two hands, looking shocked as hell. But Chosa starts blood bending and sends ghetto up into the air on this rock, then jumps onto the side of it to make an explosion at the top. And to no surprise, that shit did not work. Ghetto just reached into his deep bag of curses and pulled out the stingray to escape his attack. But bro, I know this is fiction, but how is the stingray flying in the air? He is a water species. Why not choose something that actually has wings? Like bro really just wanted to be theatrical. But now Choso is trying to shoot him down with piercing blood and is absolutely airballing every attempt. Like I'm gonna need you to hop your ass back on aim laps and work on that dog aim for me cause I would have been there hitting straight headshots. And after going 0 for 20 like Clay Thompson in the 2023 playoffs, he uses that peanut brain to rain down blood on Ghetto as he dodges all of them crashing into the rock. Choso makes these blood blades getting ready to go blow for blow with 
them, but he uses the smoke to sneak up behind him. And bro really had that. He's behind me, isn't he? Ass face. Getting boomed off the platform. And as he was falling down, bro turned his blades into blood droplets so that he could stand on them. Then proceeds to boost himself back up. And when he got back up onto the platform, he immediately tried sniping this man with piercing blood. But it gets reflected off this curse right back towards Choso. As he weaves it and jumps right towards Ghetto. And this man really unlocked Ultra Instinct mid-fight and started dodging all of his attacks with ease. Then hits Choso with a leg sweep, causing bro to start breakdancing in midair like it was Dance Dance Revolution. But he recovers and tries to counter with another attack and Ghetto simply just flips out the way for style points because that shit was unnecessary. Like he's really that one friend that you tell not to overdress when you and the boys are going out to somewhere casual and still pulls up looking like a Vogue model. Like bro, we are at McDonald's. Who are you trying to impress? But Ghetto was nowhere near done with embarrassing Choso. He blocks his punch with one hand then puts my boy under arrest and proceeds to give this man a John Jones knee to the side of his skull. Like, oh nah, this is police brutality at its finest. He probably gave this man a Tyler 1 head then with that knee. Yeah. But after getting hit with that lethal knee, Choso's CTE starts acting up white eyes and everything. Like, every time an anime character's eyes go like this, you know for a fact they're pissed off. And he just starts charging at Ghetto with no regard for human life, not even landing a single blow. Just for him to get hit with a front kick straight to the gut. And this man Ghetto hits a fadeaway off the platform. And I know Kobe was looking down on this shedding a tear, cause that shit was beautiful. RIP to my goat. But anyways, after Choso had created an opening for the sorcerers, they all tried jumping into the fight. Because by now you should know that 99% of the characters in the show do not respect the faith of the 1v1 and i'm not gonna lie i'm, I'm with, with that. that but all of them get frozen in their tracks and i mean literally frozen in their tracks by my girl urami who so far has been shown to mean serious business she even got this d1 hitter sukuna to mess with her so she gotta be valid and choso's over here talking about some putting me in a block of ice ain't gonna stop me i'm like that for real is this nigga serious she took him up on his challenge and aimed the beam point blank in between his eyes. And Brody was not scared. He was holding it 10 toes down. But luckily for him, Yuji kicks him out the way before getting eliminated. And you can tell he was still pissed about what happened earlier during their fight in the bathroom. Because he hit this man with a double drop kick trying to inflict as much pain as possible. But after saving his alleged brother, Chozo gets straight to pillow talking my boy Yuji. Alright Yuji, now that we're brothers, let's take turns saying how much we love each other. You's a freaky ass nigga! Yeah, we're not doing none of that Alabama shit on this channel. So we're gonna move on from that. But in who? Momo flies down on her broomstick to hit Ghetto and Urami with an attack and that didn't do anything other than mess up their hair and she was really over here like oh gee whiz I can't believe that didn't work like bro no wonder that attack didn't work all you did was hit it with a gust of wind go sit your ass back down on the bench we don't need you and Urami was pissed she spent two hours in the morning fixing her hair just for this goober to mess it up so she puts her hand down on the ground and freezes every single one of them this time then we see these shards headed right towards Yuji and boom that was the end of JJK so until next time peace out Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Objection! Man, I'm just playing with y'all. This is what really happened. Long time no see, Gato. Could I get your answer to my question from back then? I was wondering what type of women you go for. Oh my god. God, I know you see how bad she is. Straight 10 out of 10. If I was in Yuji's position, you would have seen me barking like this. Yeah, that brother's starving. But the episode ends there and not much happens in the next one other than the fake ghetto yapping for the entirety of it. The only notable thing that happens is that Yuta pulls back up from his vacation in Africa and gets assigned the task to execute Yuji. But we definitely not seen that animated for at least another three years. So to wrap things up, I just want to thank you guys for all the support on my JJK videos. This is going to be the last one I make for a while since I pretty much covered the entire Shibuya arc. Unless y'all would want me to cover the movie, which I definitely would be down to do. So let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, stay persistent. Assistant.